Okay, let's have a look at this test on number theory. So what you should do is print out the test and try and do it. If you give yourself about 25 or 30 minutes to do the test um, and then correct it from what I do here. So, okay, let's go. So I'll let you fill in your own name. I'm sure you know that yourself. First question, give the set definition of a rational number. So a rational number, if you remember, is any number, number that can be written as a fraction. A rational number, any number that can be written as a fraction. And the set definition of it, really, it, you should write it like this. The symbol for a rational numbers are Q. So Q is equal to, so it looks like this, it's X over Y. Just explain what X and Y are now. So X and Y both have to be integers. You just write it like that. And the Y part can't be zero. So there's the set definition of a fraction. Okay, second question, give three examples of irrational numbers. So an irrational number is a number that can't be, cannot be written as a fraction. So three examples would be, well, the square root of two we know is an irrational number, pi is an irrational number, the number e is an irrational number, e if you remember is the number that's close to 2.718, it goes on forever. So it can't be written as a fraction, so it's an irrational number. Uh, the square root of 5 is irrational, the square root of 11 is irrational. So there's five examples of irrational numbers. Okay, let's have a look at the third question then. So we got a list of numbers that we have to place in this Venn diagram. So the way, when you're doing this, if you always start from the center and work your way out. So let's look at the first number. So the square root of 2. So start from the center, which is the natural number circle. So the square root of 2, it's not a natural number, so it doesn't go in there. It's not an integer, so it doesn't go in here. It is not, um, it's, not a ra it's not a rational number, so it doesn't go in here. So the square root of two comes out here in the, in the real number circle. Sometimes what you'll see is that there's an extra piece added on here, which is for the, for the, the irrational number. So sometimes in a question, you'll see that extra bit added on to the real number circle, and that's where the irrational numbers go. Okay, let's have a look at another one. So the number three. So start from the inside and work your way out. So is three a natural number? Yes, it is. So we'll put it in here. Uh, the third one, we've got 1 over 2. So is 1 over 2 a natural number? No. Is it an integer? No. Is it a rational? Is it a fraction? Yes, it is. So I'll put 1 over 2 in here. Next one, we've got minus 3. So minus 3 is not an in a natural number, but it is an integer. So minus 3 is going to go in here. What about 8.71? Well, 8.71 is an interesting one because... A lot of people think, oh, it's, it's, it's a real number straight away, but 8.71 can actually be written as a fraction. It's 8.71 over, sorry, it's 871 over 100 is 8.71. So it is actually a fraction. So it's not a natural number. It's not an integer, but it is a fraction. It's the same as 871 over 100. What about zero? Zero is not a natural number, but it is an integer. So zero will come in here. Uh, the next one we've got 0 over 7. So 0 over 7 is, well, zero, 0 over 7 is equal to 0, really. So 0 over 7 is not a natural number, but it is an integer. So, you, okay, if you put 0 over 7 in here, that's fine, because it is, it is an integer. If you put it out here in the rationals, that would be okay too, I think, because 0 over 7 is a rational number. Let's go back to the definition of rational numbers, these are numbers up here. So, and let's look at 0 over 7, just to make sure that it is a rational as well. So it is x over y. x and y are both integers, 0 and 7 are both integers, and the y part, the bottom part, is not 0. So it is a rational. So I put it in, I put 0 over 7, 0 over 7 is equal to 0, so you could put it in here, in, or sorry, in here in the integer section, or if you put it in here, that would be fine as well. Okay, let's have a look at the next page. So we have to do a proof. We have to prove, first one, that the square root of 2 is an irrational number. So we're going to use a proof by contradiction. So proof by contradiction, we assume the opposite. So we assume the square root of 2 is rational. And we're going to try and find a contradiction there. So let's just write down what we mean by rational. So we mean that the square root of 2 can be written as x over y, where x and y Okay, x is an integer and y is an integer. Uh, and y is not equal to zero because it's rational. And then we're going to say one other thing. We're going to say that x and y both in their lowest terms. 
So if they're both in their lowest terms, then the, this, this fraction can't be broken down anymore. So let's try and find a contradiction in this. So if the square root of 2 is equal to x over y, let's get rid of the fraction. So we can multiply both sides by y. So we get the square root of 2 times y is equal to x over y times y. So we end up with the square root of 2 y is equal to x. We can square both sides. So square the square root of 2 and you get 2. Square y, we get y squared equals x squared. But now I see that I have x squared is equal to twice y squared. That means that x is an even number. So x is an even number. So I write that in. If it's an even number, any even number can be written as twice some other number. So let's say x is twice c. And just explain what c is, where c is an integer. Because if you, if you take any even number, let's say 10, 10 can be written as twice 5. Take another even number, 16. 16 can be written as twice 8. So any even number can be written as twice another integer. An odd number, you can't do that. I can't write, say, 15 isn't twice an integer. 15 is twice 7.5, which is not an integer. Okay, so we, we have now that x is equal to 2c. So let's go back up to this line. And instead of writing, instead of writing uh, x here, let's write 2c. So that means I've got 2y squared is equal to... Now look, we have x squared, but instead of writing x, I'm going to write 2c. So it would be 2c all to be squared, because instead of x, I have 2c. So let's square that out. So we get 2y squared is equal to... 2c squared is 2c by 2c, which is 4c squared. Or I have y squared is equal to 2c squared. So I just divide it by 2. So that means that... Well, that means that y must be an even number because y squared is twice some 2c squared. And anything that's any number that's twice another number is even. So y is also even. But now we have a contradiction because we have both x is even and y is even. But we said that they were both x, this fraction here, x and y were in its lowest terms. But if they're both even, then they can both be divided by 2. So they're not in their lowest terms. So that's our contradiction. So then we have, let me write that, contradiction. And I'm just going to write the reason for the contradiction. So there's our contradiction as x and y not in lowest terms. So that's our contradiction because we said they were in the lowest terms. So that means that what we assumed is false. So this, this is false. So that means, therefore, the opposite of what we assumed is true. So the square root of 2 is irrational. O N A L square root of two is irrational. And that's that's our proof. Now when you do these proofs you have to put you have to put all of this in. You have to exactly the way that I've written it here. Everyone doing it with a marker, so it's um there's not that much space to do it. So if when you do it with a pen you'll have a little bit more space to fit everything in. Okay, question five. Prove by contradiction that there are an infinite amount of natural numbers. So let's start off with our assumption. So we'll assume that there are a finite the opposite of infinite is finite so assume that there are a finite amount of natural numbers okay and now let's try and find a contradiction so if there's a finite amount of natural numbers that means there must be a last one so there must be a last there must be a last natural number if there's a last natural number, okay, let's, that's, we'll say, let's call it, we don't know what it is, so let's call that last natural number x. So let that last natural number be x. So x is our last natural number. Okay, can we make a bigger natural number than x? Well, x plus 1, if I just add 1 to a number, I get another natural number. If I take the number 9 and add 1, I get 10, which is also a natural number. So if x is a natural number, x plus 1 is also a natural number. So I'll just write that. And what else do I know about x plus 1? Well, x plus 1 is also bigger than x. So there's our contradiction because we said that x was our last natural number, but we made a bigger one. The number, the bigger one we made is x plus 1. So it's a contradiction. So I'll just explain what our contradiction is. So contradiction as we said x was the biggest but we made a bigger one, the biggest natural number. So therefore, what we assume to be true is false, that there's a finite amount, there must be an infinite amount. So therefore, there is an infinite amount 
my writing is terrible here, infinite amount of natural numbers. Okay, next question. So state the fundamental theorem, theory of arithmetic. It's a fundamental theorem, that should be. Fundamental theorem. Okay, so the fundamental theorem of arithmetic says that every number, number, every number greater than one, every, I suppose, and every whole number greater than one really should be. So every whole number greater than one is either prime or can be written as a unique um, product of primes. So every number, every whole number greater than one can be written as, sorry, every whole number greater than one is either prime or can be written as a unique product of primes. Okay, we're almost there. Two more questions to go. So this one, explain why the number, I'll write it down so, you can, so it's a little bit bigger. So it's nine to the power of 6,787. Explain why that number is not a prime number. So a prime number is a number uh, that can only be divi divisible by itself and one. So if this number is not a prime number, there must be another number that goes into it. So we have to say what that number is. So any number, any time we have nine to the power of something, that number is divisible by nine. So this number here, if you think, think about nine squared is 81, 81 is divisible by nine. Um, so any number that's divisible, or any number that's nine to the power of something is divisible by nine. So nine to the power of 6,787 is divisible by nine. So because it's divisible by nine, it's not a prime number. It's also divisible by three as well. Okay, last question. We've got to construct a line of length, the square root of two. So we're going to do that. We need our set squares and compass. So we start off by drawing a line of length one. So it doesn't have to be one cent <coughs> centimeter or anything like that. It's just a line of length one. So let's call that line, I'm gonna say is length one. Now we're gonna draw another line perpendicular to that line. So I'm gonna put a right angle here. I'm gonna, and this other line is going to also have a line, uh, length one. So I need to get that length. So I get my compass, put it on either edge. So here we go. It's gonna swing an arc up here, just Okay, so, and then I'm going to get my set square. I'm going to, in order to get a, a right angle here, I'm going to put my ruler across here, and I'm going to get the set square, and I'm going to lean it against the ruler. And now this line that I draw, that I draw, oops, up here will be perpendicular. So this line is perpendicular. And because I used the, because I use the compass to get the line the same length, this line also has length one. And now if I draw this line down here, if I join the two ends, okay, so I join that to that, this line will have length the square root of two. So let's prove it. So let's call the, that line x. Let's figure out how long is that line or what is the length of that line. So we can, by Pythagoras' theorem, we know that the square on the hypotenuse, so we have a right angle triangle here. Here's the hypotenuse. This side squared, the square and the hypotenuse, so x squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So x squared is equal to one squared plus one squared. That means that x squared, which is the length of this line here, is equal to two. And if x squared is two, that means that x is equal to the square root of two. So we wanted to construct a line of length the square root of two. We have it here. So x is equal to the square root of two. This line is length the square root of two.